Hello, and welcome to part one of the video demo of AVID SPOT. SPOT, which stands for Software Pixels on Target, assists in selecting the ideal combination of vehicle and sensor options for a given application. By combining a UAV flight simulator with the ability to control sensor parameters such as field of view, frames per second, resolution, and sensor orientation, SPOT allows the user to see in real time exactly what the vehicle would see. To the right of the screen, you will see the map view. This window is a bird's eye view of the loaded scene. All 3D models located in the terrain are also rendered in the map view. The locations and orientations of sensors are also displayed in map view. The green dot here indicates the location of our default ducted fan UAV. The blue wedge indicates the field of view of the current sensor. We will take closer looks at the map view throughout the video. Avid Spot currently supports two types of vehicles, fixed wing aircraft and ducted fan vertical takeoff and landing vehicles. The default vehicle when Spot is loaded is a ducted fan vehicle. To add an additional vehicle, we can go to the vehicle menu and click on new vehicle. We can also remove vehicles using the same menu. For the demo, I will introduce a new ducted fan vehicle named UAV. Spot allows users to open multiple sensors for the same vehicle simultaneously. This allows us to really see a comparison between two sensor options in real time. I will rename the default sensor to Sensor 1 in the camera sidebar. Now I will add a second sensor to the vehicle by selecting the Vehicle and UAV, then New Sensor, and name it Sensor 2. For the purposes of the demo, I am going to resize these sensors so they fit within the screen, but normally I can size these sensors as large as I'd like them to be. Let's have a look at the parameters available in the camera sidebar. The first three parameters control the orientation of the sensor. As you can see when I move the sliders for tilt, pan, and twist, they affect the tilt, pan, and twist of the sensor. Note that these changes only apply to the currently selected sensor, sensor 2. Let me set these all back to zero. The second group of parameters controls the location of the sensor relative to the center of the vehicle model. This is useful in locating the sensor in spot exactly where the sensor exists on your vehicle. Or, if you don't know where you'd like to place your sensor yet, these parameters can help you select the best location for your sensor. I'm going to move sensor 2 to the opposite side of the model and change its pan to 180 degrees so it's facing the opposite direction. The type group begins to define the sensor itself. The field of view parameter can broaden or narrow the viewing angle of the sensor, effectively providing the level of zoom. If you have a look at the map view, you will see the blue field of view changing as I move the slider here. Also notice that there are now two different field of view displayed, one for each sensor. So sensor 1 is right here, and sensor 2 right here. The final group of parameters define the digital sensor itself. 
For a defined aspect ratio, the sensor is then specified by its width in pixels. For the unfixed aspect ratio option, the sensor's pixel width and height are independently specified. I will go ahead and change the second sensor to a widescreen 16 to 9 aspect ratio. Move it down here to the bottom. Spot allows for very specific customization of scenes and terrain. I can change the terrain and 3D models by clicking the Scene menu, followed by the Custom Scene menu. Here I can choose to select a new terrain file and map texture, or I can enter the Terrain Edit mode. In the Terrain Editor, I can look at a list of installed 3D components. In the map view, a yellow circle marks the location of the currently selected model. As you can see here, or here. Models, sorry, in this window I can edit the location, orientation, and size of a model. We'll have a look at Four Corner Model 7, which is just a generic building on this terrain. If I change the orientation of the sensor for the terrain edit mode to look at this model, as you can see right here with the yellow dot, I can go into the scene editor and change the X location, the Y location, or the Z location, which is the altitude. Also, I can change the X rotation, Y rotation, and Z rotations. I can scale the size of this model by scaling the height also in this editor. Models can also be given specified paths. Waypoints with specific coordinates, orientations, and times define the path of a model. If I select the Mooney M20 aircraft and click set path you can see the path rendered here in the terrain edit mode as well as all the information X Y Z and rotations as well as time for any given waypoint spot also allows you to control the weather and other environmental variables Things such as the amount of fog, darkness, type of precipitation, and amount can be modeled. Steady winds can also be modeled by selecting the checkbox for steady wind and specifying a speed and direction. This will cause the vehicle to adjust its orientation accordingly. Wind gusts of various strengths, frequency, and durations may be added as well. The Spot tab displays the pixels on target for any selected target. First I'll select a target in Sensor 1. I'll find myself a tree. Let's see here. We'll use this one. And click the Select Target button. Then when I click on the tree in the window, it selects the target and it shows up in this Spot menu. 
As you can see, sensor 1 has pixels on target, but sensor 2 doesn't because sensor 2 is oriented on the opposite side of the vehicle. Let me turn sensor 2 around so that it's looking at the target as well. Oops. Accidentally deselected the target. Let me reselect it. Now, in the Spot tab, you can see that Sensor 2 has far more pixels on target than Sensor 1 because it is further zoomed in on the target and has more pixels on target. This concludes Part 1 of the demo. I, in Part 2, I will load a custom pre-made scene uh, for use in this demo and show you some of the more advanced features of Spot, including paths uh, for, your, for your sensor, um, a deeper look at the differences in multiple sensors on screen, and uh, a closer look at spot itself, the pixels on target. Thank you for watching part one, and please join me for part two.